Hey everyone. So we are continuing different processes in the body. So one of the life process that we were learning in the last part is about the circulation that we are going to continue. And I also mentioned that there are two type of circulation or you may see circulatory system present in our body that we have to cover. So about heart, we are done. So let's continue with the rest of the things that we are left with. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so I have to just move back to the first presentation. And then, not the first presentation, the first thing. I suppose you can see my screen clearly, right? PowerPoint slide show. Okay, you can see it. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to cover is human circulatory system. Actually, we are done with this topic. It's just that little, uh, you miss a discussion about the double circulation we are left with, that circulation that I'm going to just make. It will be a revision, you may say. Heartbeat pulse together and lymphatic system and blood pressure and its measurement. I don't have to introduce any topic. Your people are enough intelligent to understand that. So let's continue. So the first one is double circulation. As a reminder, I have told you this thing earlier also that there are two types of circulation. One is single circulation and one is double circulation. If you remember the case of fishes here through the gills, just blood is moving as like one time entry. Deoxygenated blood is taking entry and oxygenated uh, blood is taking exit as in with the exchange of gases that happen in between water and the blood. That's single circulation. It's moving just one time into the heart. Though, then Double means when it is moving up into the heart two times. Uh, like in our body, when once blood is being collected and then it is going into the lungs for filtration and then it come back. So the, the, there are two times. So one is systemic and one is uh, pulmonary. So through the vena cava, when blood is being conduct, uh, I mean collected here into the heart, and then it's moving back, coming back, which is the oxygenated blood through pulmonary artery, uh, it is uh, being collected, and here it is coming back to the heart, and through the iota, it is distributed to all over the part of the body. Body and the organ it is moving. So into the lung capillaries, it is being filtered. And I don't have to explain anything as diagram. You just understand it. it up. Uh, I suppose you can just write it up with the systemic. Systemic means which is accounting for the supply of oxygenated blood to all of the body part. And pulmonary things means when it is moving into the lungs for the, filter, for the filtration part. That part you can explain. So to the body part, systemic circulation. And uh, when lungs are involved, they are moving into the lungs and uh, coming back. And whatsoever movement happened between lungs and the... Um, Heart is pulmonary circulation. So I suppose that's clear to you. Double circulation happen in a body. And that is very clear to you. So let's move toward the next topic, which is heartbeat and pulse. Okay, you can wait for one minute and just check it up there. Click on, you know, just check your wrist and see. The blood is flowing. Actually, this is all related to all that, you know, uh, uh, what do we say? Valve into the heart, which are pumping opening, closing, opening, and that is all related with it. So heartbeat, this is the rhythmic dilation of the artery that results from the beating of heart and the pulse is often measured by feeling the artery of the wrist. Rhythmic dilation, because of the blood pressure dilation happen. So basically, if I talk about the thing, this is known as cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle involves two main process, which is known as diastole and systole. So stole means the contraction and diastole means uh, relaxation. You may say when diameter is getting increased. So continuously diastole and systole happen. What did I do? Let me just change the pen color. Wait, why not change? I thought I'm not able to change. It's okay. Okay, so what I was saying that what happened, uh, systole and diastole happen. So first of all, the auricles, they are going to contract and they are sending blood into the, if I talk about the right auricle, it's contracting and it's sending blood into the ventricle. That is auricular systole. And then, when there is a lot of blood into the ventricle, this is, contra uh, this is contracting and sending blood to the lungs. 
and then it's getting normal after sending the blood to the further part they get normal even if the auricle even if the ventricle that means diastole relaxation so once any part of the heart is sending blood by creating pressure that's contraction and that's the stole and once it sends the blood to the next part it get relaxed that's diastole so auricular systole auricular diastole ventricular systole ventricular diastole you getting my point so at atrial or auricular systole means when blood is being uh, creating pressure here and blood is coming down because of the pressure that's systole and once uh, the blood moves and it just things are getting normal so that's auricular diastole but in this diagram they have not shown it so that's what you understand next is ventricular systole when ventricles are contracting and they are sending blood so and the right uh, ventricle is sending to the lungs and the left is sending to the body so that's ventricular systole and then ventricular diastole as in when things are getting normal that's what you have to understand this is what is involved into the cardiac cycle uh, systole and diastole the most important thing that matter to us is the uh, ventricular processes because ventricle is the reason that the blood is moving up into the lungs and blood is moving up into the body from right ventricle it is going into the lungs from left ventricle it is moving up into the body so ventricular systole and ventricular diastole matter to us and that's what we calculate and that is what the blood pressure is i'm going to come to that point too so uh, yeah that's why the reason heart beat is there if you know lubbed up sound is there it's the sound of the heart lubbed up lubbed up lubbed up so this is related to the wall mitral wall and semilunar wall mitral wall open and then semilunar so lubbed up these kind of sounds come so i suppose these things are clear to you heartbeat and pulse is because of the rhythmic contraction and relaxation that's happened with the reason beating of heart mm -hmm. and uh, beating of heart involves nerve conduction that's why it is beating second it involves opening of valves and that's what we calculate and that is clearly related with the cardiac cycle if i move further there is a thing which is known as blood pressure into the blood pressure we do not calculate anything but ventricular systole and ventricular diastole so the instrument is known as sphygmomanometer ha ah, maybe i'll pronounce it better sphygmomanometer sphygmomanometer that's what a kind of tongue twister is sphygmomanometer is there for calculating the blood pressure so the pressure means when the when the force this is the force of the circulating blood suppose into the artery blood is flowing how much pressure it is creating toward the wall or against the wall that's blood pressure and into this case we mainly calculate systolic uh, ventricular systole and ventricular diastolic so measure when the heart beats and when blood pressure is at the highest and uh, diastolic highest means you may say ventricular systole and ventricular diastole so at the ventricular systole because a lot of blood is there so blood pressure is going to be high and when it is getting relaxed it's going to be less so these are the value which is uh, calculated against the mercury 80 mm of hd you know 80 120 120 mm of, of hd so sphygmomanometer is the the instrument through which we calculate i suppose i have video on the blood pressure thing let me see if i have a video give me a second huh i'm done on this part this information is much enough for you but then let me see um, if i have the video no give me a circular to system let me see this this is what the double circulation they are explaining in the videos that artery veins and the blood the acha so in this video they are explaining all the flow with the uh, systole and diastole so this is right atrium this is left and then they will be showing how blood is being pumped from there it is coming and from here it is going toward the lungs you see tricuspid wall yeah this uh, you see tricuspid wall is there and you see this is pulmonary wall this aortic wall blood is coming here nice picture and this is being collected into this part the left auricle and the left ventricle so nice video <laughs> it's okay about the blood pressure you want to see the sphygmometer um uh you have to give me a second i'm going to show you sphygmometer
quick manometer. So seen the blood pressure, there's a rubber cuff when they just put it up and they inflate it. So the ones it is moving up and then it just dropped down. I'm just uploading the diagram on the one note. I suppose you can see it. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, sorry. So, uh, I mean, in uh, you may call it as the stethoscope also. So basically, uh, cuff pressure is, uh, I mean, this is when they are just, you know, inflating it up, that's a cuff pressure that they are creating and cuff pressure matters a lot. So initially, they just, you know, put a lot of pressure and then they measure the systolic pressure and then uh, there is a tapping sound. And when the tapping sound is there, by the time there is a tapping sound, it means systolic pressure is equal. That's kind of, you know, machine work that they are inflating it. So systolic pressure is equal to the one that is in the system. And then when the tapping sound just disappear and then it means the cuff pressure is equal to the diastolic pressure. So when there's a tapping sound, they are calculating systolic pressure. When there is a tapping sound disappearing, then there's a diastolic pressure. For now, I suppose that information is much clear to you. Uh, I'm going to just put a little, little revision here because you might be getting uh, thinking too much about uh, this presentation. Yeah. Uh, whether you did not understand it in a complete way, but I suppose this information is much enough for you. So what I have told you about the heartbeat and the pulse, which is per minute, they are on an average 72, but getting 50 or 90, that's all normal. So on an average, we just say 72 minute per, so I'm pulse or I may say heartbeat per minute. This That, that means this many time of, you know, all that opening, closing and opening. So this is the rhythmic dilation of the artery because of the beating of heart with nerve conduction is happening into the heart because that's how heart pump. And uh, for calculation or calculating all of the phenomena, I explained you cardiac cycle, which involves diastole and the systole, auricular and ventricular. Ventricular, systole and diastole is the one that matter to us. And that's what we calculate during the time when we see the blood pressure. That's what we calculate with the help of sphygmomanometer. And where we just calculate diastolic 180 and 120 mm of HG. And that's it. Now, I suppose that's clear to you. You can watch the video again if you do not understand. But that is, that is it. Okay. Did I put a video here? No, 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 no. I don't like this video. I'm not going to explain that. I should have deleted it. So the next thing into this that we are going to cover is the lymphatic system. I explained to you that there are two systems present in our body. One is blood vascular system and then there is a lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is also the conducting system present into our body and here lymph is flowing. The same way I told you, like into the blood circulatory system, there's blood, heart and the blood vessels. Into the lymphatic system, there is lymph, lymphatic vessels. And then there is lymphatic organs and nodes. So I'm going to explain you their function, what they are doing. But understand this, guys. Uh, into the lymphatic system, actually, lymph is being flowing. It is a part of the immune system in our body. Our body is protecting itself in all the part. In my head, in my arms, in my every part. How? It has a fluid, I'm talking about the body, it has a fluid throughout the body which is moving with the help of lymphatic vessels. And that fluid is known as lymph. This lymph is nothing but this is blood minus RBC and plasma. Sorry, RBC and it's a plasma plus WBC. So blood minus RBC, you may say. Actually, plasma, why I'm writing on this side? Actually, into the lump, lymph, <laughs> Plasma plus WBC. These things are present. Not even platelets. I should have counted that itself. So that's blood is mainly RBCs and the platelets. And plasma and WBCs are present. WBCs are the leukocytes, white blood cells. They are the defense. They make the defense mechanism of our body. Now, point is that how lymph is formed. Yes, that is formed with the help of filtration of blood. And it used to flow through the lymphatic vessels. What is the function of lymphatic organ and node? I'll come to that. First, let me tell you how lymph is formed. So basically, this is artery and these are the veins. And they are making capillaries, lymphatic capillaries. 
so if you say lymph capillaries are also like the same way blood vessels are all through the body lymphatic vessels are all through the body so they are present nearby so what happened wbc and plasma they come out of the capillary and they take entry into the lymphatic vessel that's how the level of wbc lymph and everything is maintained in a body it keep on moving in and out of the lymphatic vessel and blood vessels they keep on helping in transport also helping in protecting the body also but that is how lymph is formed it is moving through the lymphatic vessel okay that's clear so the next point i have to tell you about the lymphatic organ and lymphatic node but before that let me tell you composition of the lymph uh that's not part of your syllabus but because you should learn it might be helpful for your olympiads uh it consists of uh, solids and water maximum into the solid part you may say it has the proteins names are given lipids are there you don't have to remember the name but if you want to remember the name these are type of lipid carbohydrate amino acids all the amino acids are there no nitrogenous substances as in urea creatinine these are actually the nitrogenous waste i would say inorganic substances include all the minerals and chloride bicarbonate you may say they are kind of buffer ones which maintain the ph protein i have told you in the plasma this part because that's the plasma part na no? that's why the same things are written yeah so the cellular component is the one that's most important so lymphocytes 1000 to 2000 per cubic millimeter it consists of monocyte macrophage and plasma cells i have told you plasma cells as in uh, t cells and b cells of the lymphocytes types of lymphocytes and macrophage itself is the monocyte monocyte grow further to form the macrophage i think the basic information about their function how the liquid i have told you in the last part but the composition of the lymph consists of the plasma composition and the wbc so i don't think anything is difficult for you to understand if you have any query just put it on the discussion board but yeah you might get confused that uh, globulin i mentioned in the bodies i mentioned clotting factor which helps in blood clotting chylomicron lipoproteins are lipid plus protein so they are the lipid derivatives glucose is carbohydrate i don't think you will not understand anything clear so the next thing i will say you may say that's the last thing that i have to explain is about the and lymphatic uh, organs so first of all that's a diagram of the lymphatic system that that i have explained that i have put it up there this is like green because of the pale color little greenish color not pale lish you may say yeah so it has all the lymphatic vessels throughout the body you see uh, this is going on into all the part of the body and wherever it is going we name the lymphatic vessel accordingly you see this a little little swellings these are known as lymphatic node depending upon in which area this node is present we name it up so lymphatic node lymphatic node is the you may say it's like a war ground where the number of lymphocyte is maximum pathogen killing cells are maximum so number of lymphocytes are there now i would like to add one thing if any pathogen is attacking the body it will be dragged toward the Uh, lymphatic node and it will be killed here so lymphatic nodes are like if you know the tonsils they are also a lymphatic node there are sometimes swelling swelling means some fight is going on in between fever swelling these are actually the you may say symptom that yeah and pathogen has attacked and our body is fighting against it spleen this is the largest lymph remember it it can come in your olympiad paper this is the largest lymph node of the body it has a number of rbcs wbcs number of blood cells die in the spleen it is present nearby the stomach area and uh, yeah spleen this is the largest node and you have to remember this so tonsil i told you spleen i told you what else is left yeah so the next thing is left is lymphatic organs lymphatic organ is the thing where lymphocytes are formed lymphocytes are of two type b and t lymphocyte and these lymphocyte further makes antibodies in our body antibodies in our body if any pathogen uh, attacks a body so antibody is going to fight against it and uh, yeah so lymphatic organs include bone marrow and thymus Yeah, that way, for na. Bone marrow is present in all long uh, bones of the body. People get confused where bone marrow is present. This is in all the long bones, like 
the arm one and the thigh one and the back one where bone marrow is present and thymus this is present nearby the actually it's present just below the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity yeah near the chest in the center area thymus on the heart interesting part about thymus is that with the, it is in a large size in the babies but with the growing age uh, size reduces and these are the places where lymphocytes are getting formed thymus also act as a gland which releases hormone thymosin i'm going to teach you that in control and coordination chapter or probably some other teacher will be covering that but thymosin controls the um, bnt lymphocyte formation it's okay if you do not understand it now you will understand that in the next chapter that's all about the lymphatic system and i suppose i covered everything yeah i, I covered hmm you're done so basically guys is in this part what we have covered i'll tell you later let's see questions what is the normal range of blood pressure i don't have to answer this question what acha take a between anywhere and 120 and high blood pressure is this lowest is i thought like why they have written 4140 and 90 what type of blood vessels carry blood away from heart i uh, done that because away from heart arteries they are carrying oxygenated blood arteries are, are they are the branches of aorta they are distributing blood to all the part of the body and we call it as the systemic circulation i suppose that's clear okay so now i'm going to stop the screen share it's fine we have done just one question but we have covered a lot of things now you able to see it okay so guys we have covered it at maximum why my screen is not getting set hold on it's wet now so sorry okay so my point is that we have covered this transportation uh, we have covered the circulatory system we have covered heart lymphatic vessels lymphatic system we have covered about heartbeat systole and diastole and all we are left with is excretory system only now so it's fine i'm going to just cover that up in the next part and i'll see you up there see me there bye